hello, I'm providing a recording from yesterday's live class review because the recording quality was not so super in that and I'd like to um, make sure that you have all the information you need. I'm going to provide this in the OHS. You'll have both. You can compare it against the live lesson um, so you can work through both of those. You're going to be reviewing the texts and literary eras that you've learned about this year so that you can complete the semester study guide and ace that final exam. This is from yesterday, Monday, May 10th. And we'll talk about final exam details briefly here. It is worth 102 points. It has 34 multiple choice questions. They are three points each. You will submit the completed study guide and enter the test password in order to unlock the final exam. It is a two-part password. You'll need it from the end of this recording and from the, re the end of the second session recording. You'll want to look at the events and issues that affected writers of each area, the defining characteristics of the writing during that period, and the most important details from key passages in the unit, and that's primarily what we'll focus on in this review. We'll be looking at modernism and imagism, Harlem Renaissance, the Glass Menagerie, and contemporary American literature. So today's review focuses on the first few units, Modernist Poetry, the Harlem Renaissance, the Glass Menagerie. You'll want to review part two. Um, again, you can see the live class recording and the one that I've included in the OHS um, between the two. They, you should be in great shape. So final exam dates to know. Um, Wednesday, May 12th is when it opens. Friday, May 14th is when it's due by 3 p.m. Um, I will be entering zeros after 3 p.m. if you are not exempt because of your NWEA score and you haven't taken the final. However, it doesn't lock until Wednesday, May 19th, so you can still take the test until then, even if you have a zero entered, um, as long as you take it before the unit locks on May 19th, then you can still earn credit for it. So we're going to start off with um, a match game. What you might want to do here is pause this recording because we're not going to go over the answers here. That's not my purpose in doing these reviews. It is to get you to know what you ought to go and study. Um, if you want to check your answers after you've paused this and you determined which goes with each era, you can check that against the recording that was made in the live lesson yesterday. We did go over the answers there for that. Okay, so we're going to start with modernist poetry. And the first one is Anyone Lived in a Pretty How Town by E.E. E. Cummings. Now, these are the questions that I want you to think about uh, when we deal with each of the poems we're going to go through. What about the poem represents a modernist style? And consider what evidence there is that highlights the passage of time in this one in particular. So I'm going to pose some questions about each poem. I'm going to pause to let you read through it. Um, if I read through each one of the pieces, um, it's going to make this recording much too long. So I'm going to pause. Um, you should pause the recording, read it, and then consider the questions associated with it. So take a pause now. All right, and now that you've read through it, what about this poem represents the modernist style? Consider that. Go back and look at the OHS, go through your reading journals, and determine what evidence you have that supports that. Also consider how the poet deals with the passage of time in this piece. For Mr. Flood's party, again, I'm not going to read the entire piece. Um, what I want you to do is pause here and read it yourself. So take a moment and pause now. All right, now that you've read it, I want you to consider the questions that I've shared here. How does Eben Flood feel when he looks down at the town at the end of his walk? What is the tone of the poem? What is the mood? Are they different in this case? Keep in mind that tone is the author's attitude and mood is the feeling that the reader gets from the work. Are they the same in this case? Are they different and how is that the case? So for the road not taken, this one, the primary thing I'd like you to consider is what do the two roads in this poem represent symbolically? So again, let's pause here for a moment and let you read that. 
All right, and now that you've read it, what do the two roads in the poem represent symbolically? Again, that's something that you can look back at your reading journals about. We covered it there. We covered it in the live recordings that dealt with this. So if you want a refresher, those are good places to check. Now we have a couple poems by Carl Sandburg. The first one being Chicago. Again, I'm not going to read the poetry itself, but I want you to recall this. I want you to pause here and take a moment to read it. All right, and I assume that you paused and now you're coming back. And how does the speaker describe Chicago? What is, the main, what is a main theme from the poem? And which line or lines from the text prove that? So that's what you want to spend some time with with this poem. Um, remember some things we talked about uh, related to this poem again in your reading journal. How is personification a part of this poem? So double check that reading journal, spend some time with that, and consider these questions when you're thinking about Chicago. What about another poem by Sandberg? Grass. Again, let's pause for a minute and let you read the poem. All right, now that you've had a chance to reread it, um, how does the grass, which is a speaker, feel in this poem? And which lines from the text prove how the grass feels? That's something you'd want to review in your reading journal as well. Something we covered there. What evidence do you have? That's something you always want to look for in the poetry is where are you getting your response? What is the evidence that supports your belief? So what do you need to remember about modernism and imagism? This is a good thing, a good time to go back and check that um, the match game that was shared at the beginning where you can go back and look at the different qualities and figure out which ones are associated which, with which era. This is a good uh, process to help you remember some very specific important things about each one of the eras that we're considering. All right, let's look at the Harlem Renaissance next. We'll start off with I2 by Langston Hughes. So again, take a moment to read this. Pause here. And now that you've read it again, you've reviewed it, it's probably refreshed your memory since going through it originally. What does a speaker believe will happen tomorrow? And what does that belief represent? What is the tone of this poem? And what evidence supports that tone? Let's take another, take a look at another one by Langston Hughes, um, Dream Variations. And again, take a pause and please read through that again. All right, now that you've had a chance to go through it again, really consider what is the speaker's desire? What does the speaker really want? And what, what evidence do you see of that in this poem? And what does that represent symbolically? Those are some things I'd like you to consider when reviewing Dream Variations by Langston Hughes. One of my favorites, Sympathy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. So please pause and read through this again. I know you've read all these already, but I'd like you to read them again now to refresh your memory. All right, after having read through it again, and after pausing to do that, what does the bird represent in this poem? What evidence is there in the poem to support that claim? So take some time with that one. What does the bird represent? Go back to your reading journals, go back to the OHS, and you will um, have a good sense of what the bird represents in this poem. Another one by Paul Lawrence Dunbar, We Wear the Mask. Please pause here and reread that poem. All right, and now that you've had a chance to read it, what purpose does the mask serve after having read through that? What does the mask represent in this poem and what evidence is there to support that? Again, your reading journal will help you. What about Any Human to Another by County Cullen? 
Take a moment and read that, please. So pause. And now that you've had a chance and you're back, you've had a chance to read it, what does the speaker believe about grief and about joy? What is the theme of this poem? Which lines from the text prove that? Please consider those questions as you review this poem. And you'll want to do the same thing in reviewing the Harlem Renaissance. Go back to that match game and uh, take a look at the qualities that we associate with the Harlem Renaissance. All right, let's take a look at the glass menagerie and the things you'll want to review when looking at this. You're going to want to look at character traits. Consider, for instance, the character traits of Tom. What does he have in common with his mother, Amanda? What is his relationship with his sister, Laura, like? Here's some, um, I'm just going to move down here. Here's um, a monologue from Tom that's from the end of the play. What is the overall tone of the text as a result of Tom's narration? And how does this relate to a big theme of the play? So again, pause here, spend some time reviewing this text and considering those questions. What about the symbolism in the glass menagerie? What could the fire escape symbolize? What are other symbols that we talked about? We had a nice, very in-depth discussion about the symbols in the glass menagerie. Please go back and review those and consider the symbols associated with this play. Let's consider Amanda. What are her character traits? Again, your reading journal is going to be very useful here. There was a big section on character traits. What about the idea that Amanda is obsessed with the idea of a gentleman caller throughout the play? What does that tell us about her? Here's some dialogue that might help you with that. What about Laura and her character traits? What does the glass unicorn symbolize? How does this relate to a big theme of the play? So in terms of those symbols again, lots of symbolism in this, the glass menagerie itself, the unicorn specifically, who are they related to as far as characters? Here's a scene you might want to review. You can pause here. This is between Jim and Laura in the discussion of that unicorn and losing its horn. And what do we want to remember about the glass menagerie? So again, you'll want to go back um, to the OHS, go back to your reading journal and the structure of this play, um, what what are particular things, not just about drama in general, but about this play in particular, the idea of a memory play? What are some things we can associate with that that you might want to remember? All right, so what else can you do to prepare for the final exam? You'll fill out the final exam study guide in lesson 9.01. You'll submit that in 9.02 to unlock the test. The study guides due Thursday the 13th. Review the text and associated lessons that were confusing to you during this review. Make sure you do pause as you go through and review the poetry and the pieces. Review your reading journals for this semester. That's going to be huge. And make sure you review part two um, of the final review session. So, the final exam password, the first one is blue. That will be um, used in conjunction with the other password. It's a two word password that you'll use and you'll find that second word in the second part of the review. And that is both in the OHS and in the live class recordings list. Um, and please, please don't hesitate to ask me questions. If you have anything that you need clarified from either of these reviews or anything through the semester that you have questions about, reach out, please. That's why I'm here. I'm here to help. You've got this, all right? This is, you're going to do very well on the test. Um, and just let me know how I can help you to do that. All right. Have a good one, everybody.